The Ostro handles incredibly well. Tell me more, Chris. The power transfer on it feels great. Nailed it. Putting aside Froomey's very entertaining comments about the group set. The constant rubbing, potential for mechanicals. His review of the Factor Vam Ostro is essentially heaping praise on the bike. I've done a fantastic job with this bike. Handles incredibly well. Power transfer on it feels great. So as you guys know, I've been riding and racing this frame for, well, the last four months. And whilst I haven't been winning tours on it, I've been giving it and myself an absolute battering on it. So let's have some fun breaking down his comments. And I'm gonna add in some of my own thoughts from my own riding experience. And ultimately, I wanna leave you with a really clear impression of my thoughts on this bike from the experience that I've had riding it. All right, let's start with the weight. What is your bike weighing in at, Froomey? As you see it here, it's weighing just under seven kilos. And I think with a bit of bit of tinkering, we could probably get it down to the legal race limit of 6.8 kilos. Okay, so my experience is, look, my bike weighs 7.48 kilos, pictured as this with the black ink 50 wheels, Shimano 12 speed group set on it. So look guys, I could potentially get some 30s on there similar to what he's doing to maybe get 200 grams off it, but I don't realistically think I could get down to the sort of weight that he is running. I'm gonna leave the weight chat there. We can kind of have that in a separate place, but honestly, that is the bike weight I have. All right, what else you got for me? The engineers over at Factor have done a fantastic job with this bike. All right, that's a pretty slop open-ended marketing comment, which I've probably used in half the bike reviews that I have done. But look, it does give us a chance to talk a little bit about the design. If I was going to hand out an award to the engineers at Factor, I would term it something like this, a merit award for designing a fully integrated frame, which doesn't come with a list of trade-offs and a ball lake of issues. The frame is borderline practical and quirk free. Like unlike some of the other flagships that are out there like the SL7, the Canyon Aero, where you've seen some issues that kind of hit the forums and then explode all over the media, that stuff hasn't tended to happen with this bike. Okay, so it's hardly a headline grabber, right? So flagship road bike that isn't a ball ache to maintain. But look, that stuff matters to you. You don't have a surface cause looking after this stuff. And a lot of the time, these top end, absolute freakish design road bikes are that because they are really finicky. I haven't found this. I ride this bike a lot and that matters to me. All right, what else you got for me? Out on the road, the Ostro handles incredibly well. Tell me more, Chris. The power transfer on it feels great. Nailed it. Couldn't agree more, Froomey. Be under no illusion, guys. This bike is a fucking rocket ship. I'm sorry, I can't articulate it any better. It looks like the weight saving, a lot of it's probably come from the thickness of the frame, which I've talked about a bit on the channel in the past, but also you know, really thin seat stays. I haven't noticed that that's caused any wobbling around the back end, so I'll take it, you know? I can kick this up to speed so much faster than anything I've experienced. A massive amount of that has to just come from how light the back end feels. Like, I'm not a big power guy. I don't need it to be full chunky ass stuff. When I get out of the saddle and have a little squeeze across, it just goes, you know? If you are getting dropped by your mates, insert picture of Jesse Coyle, on climbs and sometimes even on flat roads, it's not the bike's fault, unfortunately. It's your legs. Th this thing is not holding you back. Again, I hate to swear, but it's a fucking rocket ship. So yes, this is a review, guys, that I really hope you're enjoying, but I hope you've noticed I'm really trying not to use any, like, stock, like beautiful pictures of the bike. All the footage that you're seeing is just me out riding the bike or stuff that I'm just filming as I ride, as I train, as I race. Because like ultimately guys, this is my impression of the bike, my opinion of it. I couldn't give a shit if you bought it or not. So if I'm doing stuff like this in the future, I make sure to keep that in mind. And I wanna do more of this. So please hit that sub button, hit the like button. Hope you guys have appreciated. Been churning out some content recently, some kind of decent content, I thought. So guys, hit the sub, hit the like, it really helps it out. All right, what else you got for me? 
The Ostro handles incredibly well. I love the straight lines. Not surprised he's saying that, given his bike history. I mean, for probably a decade, he was riding the curviest bike on the market, the Pinarello. Coming to this, it's very much straight lines. I haven't found that because I've come from a very straight lined bike on the Develle, but it does give us a chance to talk about the geometry and the most important thing, the aesthetics of the bike. There's nothing particularly groundbreaking in the geometry. In fact, I've spoken to some fitters and the term they use is it's quite achievable. And much of that is really just because there aren't too many gimmicks on the frame itself. The seat post is pretty standard. There's no strange bar stem setups with the option of a zero or a 25 mil setback seat post. Now I decided to go for a 54 centimeter frame. I am running 28 mil tubeless ready tires. You can run up to a 32, but I think the 28 sit really well with these black ink wheels. As for the most important thing, the aesthetics, the looks of this bike, yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that kind of stuff. But I do want to highlight one thing. I love the way it looks when you are riding it. Get on this bike, got this like matte mirror finish on it. Yes, got this little like carve out down the top tube, some sort of sinks into the handlebars, you got the bowed out forks, like it really does look cool when you are on it. And that matters because then you just want to be sitting on it. And that's, that's a good thing, right? So look, as far as I am concerned, it ticks the boxes. It definitely ticks the cafe. There's my bike box. It likes the Insta box and it very much likes the selfie box. So up to now, I've been pretty much positive on Froomey's review. I think we can all agree it was an absolute breath of fresh air and probably one of the most entertaining things I saw on YouTube last year. If you're not on disc brakes already, it's only a matter of time until you're, you're made obsolete in a way and forced onto that. And I would like to think at this point, you guys are getting a pretty positive vibe about my impressions of the bike. But there's obviously one subject that Froomey didn't discuss because it probably never occurred to him to discuss it. But that is the value of the bike. The, is this worth it? for that money. Every single person watching this video will have a different experience of that. You'll have different disposable incomes. You'll have different priorities in life. You'll be at different stages in life. For like one look at the $40,000 bike video from the other week, it's very clear that what people are willing to spend or think about spending on a bike changes and gets very opinionated very quickly. But what we can do is we can definitely compare it to what are its competitors in its price range range as it stands. I would argue the direct competition for this bike, given a similar build, would be a Cervelo S5 for around $13,000, an S-Works Tarmac SL7 for around $14,15, and a Canyon Aero Road for around $11,000, $12,000. Which is just a hell of a lot of money, but the thing is, it's buying you a very similar bike. All those four bikes are very comparable to each other performance-wise. So this is just where you have to lean on your local distributor. What can they get their hands on? What is, what's doing it for you? Because ultimately the performance difference here, guys, is negligible. Now there is a reason I didn't include any of the off-the-shelf, like Chinese frames, like the wind space and stuff like that. There's two reasons, okay? The first is I honestly think that if you are in the market for a Factor Ostro Vam, you're probably not also considering a wind space. That's probably not the two that you're tossing up between. And the second is something that I have a hell of a lot of experience in, and it's something that I can do standalone stuff on again if you want me to talk about it. And that is this. The production of these two frames is essentially quite similar. I'm not going to go too much into it, but I know the factory where this frame came from, right? And it's very close to some of the frames that I've ridden to in the past. That does not mean they are the same frame. The big difference happens before that. The big difference is R and D. What that means to you, what that means to your riding experience, etc., is the million dollar question. But that is the reason, a lot of the times, between the prices. I like this bike, I'm gonna keep riding it, I'm gonna keep racing it. But between you and me, all right, if someone came along to me and said, Chris, do you want to try an S5 or, you know, a Trek Madone or something? I'd be like, yeah, cool, let's do it. And that's not like, you know, oh, YouTube. That's me like, I have no allegiance, no emotional attachment to this bike. The reason for that is like the brand factor, I don't care. Like they just make bikes. As far as I'm concerned, they make carbon things that I sit on 
to ride. You know, I look back at my Bianchi. I had an emotional attachment to that. I look back at my Legend. I had an emotional attachment to that. Loved that bike. I was connected to it. I had no connection to this bike. And that's mostly because of the brand. I couldn't give a shit. Great bike. Love it. Going to keep racing it. But no attachment. And the reason I finish with that is I love this bike. I want you to come away with a positive impression of this bike. But if stuff like history, even if it's almost pretend if that matters to you this is not the route to go to for you in, in my opinion so guys i really really hope you enjoyed that i wanted to come at that from a different angle try and take a different take on on reviews i really hope it was entertaining i hope it was enjoyable guys i will catch you super soon